Lincoln hasn't always been a major player in the luxury segment, but it's launched several new models that have changed the perception of the brand. On this week's show, Joy Filatico, the group vice president of Lincoln, discusses her plans for the rebirth of the company. Underwriting for the production of Autoline this week has been provided by Borg Warner. The world is changing at an ever-increasing pace. No matter what the mode of transportation, there is always the need for an efficient propulsion system. And that's exactly what Borg Warner has been doing since the earliest days of the automotive industry. We create innovative mobility technologies that reduce energy consumption and emissions while improving performance. Our proven track record has made us an industry leader in forward-looking propulsion solutions for combustion, hybrid, and electric vehicles. And now, here's your host, John McElroy. I want to thank you all for joining us on AutoLine this week. Today's show, we're going to be talking a lot about the Lincoln Motor Company. We'll talk about other things, too, but our special guest for today's show is Joy Filatico. She is the head of the Lincoln Motor Company, but I think I've got this right. Also a group vice president at the Ford Motor Company, in charge of all marketing at the Ford Motor Company, and you're the chairman of the board of the Ford Credit Company. That's a lot of jobs, Joy. Yeah, they keep me busy. <laughs> so I, I'm honored to have all those responsibilities and really enjoying my new roles. It's great to have you on the show. And also joining us today are Jean Jennings. And if you look on social media, you'll find her writings there under Jean Knows Cars. And also joining us today is Paul Bryan. You can find videos that he does, his turn, her turn, with Lauren Fix. And you'll find that all over social media as well and online. Great to having the both of you here. Thank you. Nice to be in here. Joy, let's start talking about Lincoln yes. from the, the, the get-go. Um, you've just taken over fairly recently in this. What are the priorities that you see in it? Because I think Lincoln is on a recovery trip right now, and the perception of the brand is definitely changing for the better, but the sales are not there yet. What are you going to have to do? Well, certainly the priorities are about continuing the brand transformation. And as you said, we are building momentum. Uh, we're really pleased to the reception to Navigator. We've launched the refresh uh, MKC and Nautilus, and we're very excited about the new Aviator. Uh, from a sales perspective, we're really focusing on healthy sales. So we're really taking a look at the business and making sure that we're fit and that we're focusing on areas where we're building the brand with our sales efforts and focusing on those things such as you know, looking at the fleet uh, amount, bringing it down, and making sure we're focusing on true uh, retail sales and luxury markets. I'm thinking about um, the subscriptions, um, your subscription service. How is that going for you, and do you have plans for to continue it for Aviator? So we're still in pilot mode on subscription. As you know, we launched with 15 model year, and then this last year we added 17 model year. And we really learned a lot. Um, so the 15 model years, you know, we're releasing those. Uh, the 17 model years, we've learned some things about pricing. and they're So what you're saying in 15 model year and 17, you're, you're doing this with used vehicles. Exactly. Good, good point, John. Uh, we looked mm -hmm. at the appreciation curves, and we felt the uh, approach that would be best for us was to look at used vehicles versus new. And that's where we're mm -hmm. learning a lot. We do like the fact that we have this opportunity for people that don't want to own a car to try a Lincoln. So we're really uh, piloting it, learning every day. We're also looking for opportunities to work with our dealers in this with this platform, and we'll have more to talk about that later. It, it, it's really good with the dealers to bring the customers to them in a new way. Exactly. Is it not? And then you roll out so many interesting services at the same time. Yeah, it's an opportunity, like I said, to introduce someone to the brand mm -hmm. um, and have them experience it with a used vehicle that maybe doesn't want that commitment for a long-term lease or retail. Any surprises there that people are just going crazy for? I'm, I'm so glad you're doing this with Lincoln or any surprises? Well, where we're doing it, the pilots are both in California, mm -hmm. and that's a market where we'd like to continue to improve our share there. So I think what's been good is we've been had the opportunity to help people experience the vehicle that haven't had it before. Mm -hmm. um, and we were surprised uh, at the vehicles that are being chosen. Um, we're also uh, very pleased with the uptake since we've done some adjustments to the model on it, and so we're continuing to learn. This is a space. One thing I was surprised with on the industry perspective is how many people were trying it on new, uh, and we think that 
we're we have the right approach looking at it unused. And that, that's because of depreciation of the new exactly. vehicles. The the thing I'm wondering about is you know the the dealer body can get very uh, traditional in the in the way that it wants to move product. Have they been pushing back on this, or have they been uh, embracing it as a new avenue for them? And what have you learned from other companies that are now adjusting what they're doing with their subscription programs? Um, so first, along the dealer body, you know, they've been very interested in the pilots. We work with our dealer council, tell them what we're doing, and they've just said, bring us along and let us know. And we want to make sure what would our role be in this in the future. Mm -hmm. So they understand that there are different uh, methods of purchasing vehicles out there with this collaboration economy and they want to be a part of the future so they're keen to have a role so that's why we're looking at how we could leverage the platform that we have and bring them along the road with it so i think i think we're seeing that they're interested again the moves that we've seen other folks make uh, other competitors or people in the manufacturing we're surprised at the the new the fact that they feel there's a way to make it we think on new it'd be very niche it'd be very low volume so we're, we're happy with our pilots on used, and we want to continue to learn in that area. Well, on well, the other yeah. hand, Volvo yeah, sold yeah. out. Yeah. I mean, they That's, sold out of XC40. Point that out. Yeah, I think um, if you look at some of the details, and, and you know, I'll obviously I'll let them speak about their program, but some of them are, look a lot more like traditional leases that maybe have packages on them, like a bundled solution where you get a maintenance and a lease together. So I think the troop uh, How subscription. do you delineate yours? See, ours is separate in the fact that but it is actually, um, you do not have to commit to the full duration, right? It's really a short term. You pay a fee, you get that flexibility. If you look into some of them, there's, they don't all have the same level of flexibility. Mm -hmm. But you're right, there was a lot of momentum there and something to continue to watch and learn. What about all that add-on stuff like, we'll pick your kids up from school and bring them home, we'll take them here, we'll come and get your car and wash it and gas. You still doing all of that to those used cars? No, um, certainly uh, as far as idea. picking up children, we, ha we <laughs> haven't done there. that. <laughs> uh, Pickup and delivery is something that we're mm -hmm. doing that our dealers are engaged with and doing that uh, for us that we're very pleased with. So that's a service where somebody wants to have their vehicle serviced, we'll pick it up from wherever they're, they're at, we'll take it and we'll bring it back and we'll do deliveries. Did you ever find a kid in there? No, no kids so far, <laughs> glad to say, um, but we've done over 180,000 rides and we really believe it's com uh, contributing to our improvement in our dealer satisfaction scores, so we're pleased. Why don't you tell us all about what Lincoln's trying to do here, because you're, you're yeah. trying to create a boutique kind of experience for people who buy Lincolns, and you've been experimenting, or Lincoln's been experimenting with a number of things. It kind of comes back to what Paul was saying <clears throat> before. What are you learning? What, what, what's really working? What are some of the things you're leaving, by the way? side? So great question. What we're learning on the things that save people time and make their life easier mm -hmm. or effortless are things that people are really appreciating, such as the pickup delivery, uh, the clear subscription uh, that we have out there that we offer for six months when you buy a new 18 model year, a new Lincoln. Those things are going very well. The other thing that we've learned is on pickup pick and delivery, there's a lot of uh, things around the fringe that we can build on that. And an area that we're focusing on is effortless sales. So what else in the dealer sales process can we improve like we have with pickup and delivery? And that's where we're really getting some good learning as well. At the same time, we continue to pilot and try new things um, to look for other services that can differentiate the brand. So the whole idea is to differentiate our brand. We think we have a great distinctive uh, DNA with Quiet Flight and we want to marry that with services to have a unique experience. When, when you've got all of these programs in there to make it effortless or, or with less effort for your customer, and, and is that antithetical to, I'm going to come back to the dealer body again because those folks want to be involved in that very, very clearly and very definitively. And yet the trend in the industry is to try to do as much online as possible. How do you, how do you get the dealer mixed into that to the point where he becomes a significant part of the deal while making it effortless or more, more effortless for your customer? Well, I just want to say we've been very pleased with the dealer response and support on pickup and delivery. They're a key uh, integral player in that, and so we're, More we're very touches. yeah, we're very happy with that. 
to answer your question, it's all about effortless sales and working with them. And we have a, an institute that we use where we're training the dealers about how do we make everything more effortless for our customers. And they know that time is a commodity. You know, they're busy people as well. They understand how the tr luxury trends are, are, are moving forward and what we need to do to continue to differentiate ourselves. So they're really on board with us and they're partners in it. And we use our dealer council and work with them on a lot of these programs. Of course, one of the keys is having the right product to make sales easy, right? Yeah. So where do you see Lincoln going from that standpoint? Because as we all know in the U.S. right now, passenger sedans, not so good. Everything seems to be SUVs and crossovers. Well, you know, John, we've had more product in the last four years than we've had in, in several years. So we're really excited with our product a Cadence right now. I mentioned after Navigator, we refreshed the MKC. With the Nautilus is arriving at the dealerships right now and having really good reception. And of course, we're super excited about this new vehicle What's behind, behind you, you right here, the yeah. Aviator. Right. And, and that is a real key uh, uh, play in our product lineup. Uh, Aviator is in the medium uh, premium segment. It is the highest volume uh, segment in the luxury industry in the U.S., third highest in China. So super excited about the opportunity with all new Aviator. Um, when you talk about the sedans, we also have to always think about China. And this year has been a really incredible year in China for sedans. It's about 50% of the sales are still sedans in China. So that's really, really important. So we'll continue to monitor the trends in the US, but we also have to continue to monitor them in China as well. And sedans are a significant presence there. What's the, what's the percentage split of, of what you're selling in China? It's about 50-50 for the industry yeah. on uh, sedans and for utilities. Mm -hmm. Now, how that uh, grows over time, you know, will remain to be seen. But right now, it's still 50-50 in the industry. What sedan? What Lincoln sedans? What models are you selling in China? So we have two uh, sedans, and they're both 17 model year. It's Continental and MKC, and we sell them in both markets. And we've actually had growth in Continental this year that in the China market. Mm -hmm. Here in the U.S., it's been a little more challenging. China seems to be slowing down a little bit right now, and, and Ford, the other part of the company, is really slowed down a lot in China. How's Lincoln doing there this year? So what's interesting about the China market this year, you're right, uh, we've seen the softening in the market, but the premium is actually growing. So it's a tale of two stories there. You have to pull that apart and you'll see premium is actually growing. So Lincoln sales, well, we're expecting them to be up about 3% this year in, in Lincoln in China, so we're pleased with that. Mm -hmm. I think that Lincoln is looking much more modern, like a more uh, modern premium vehicle. It's not just old school limousine look. So what you're doing, what your design, what your chief designer and his team is doing is, is really creating a beautiful and, and um, a purely luxury vehicle there, especially that black label. I, th well, I think the cool really part nice. is... Your, your, nice. your team was not afraid of the horsepower number. I mean, you, no, that was good. You know, yeah, I <laughs> we mean, like that's, that that's, a, that's a big number to put, put in there, 450 horses? We are so excited about the step-up power that you get with the PHEV, and we mm -hmm. think that's really part of the story of the Aviator and bringing back the name Grand Touring to talk about not only the mm -hmm. elegance of the drive, but the power that comes if with that. If that can't sell electric, I don't know what can. <laughs> Well, think we of think of your best golf cart ever. <laughs> <laughs> well, what I find interesting is here you've got this plug-in electric. It is uh, not got any badge on it that says hybrid or PHEV. You're just calling it Grand Touring. You're the head of the marketing uh, at the company now. <laughs> Run us through that. Why you're not really marketing this as a hybrid. So what we've learned is consumers are very confused about hybrids, plug-in hybrids, battery electric, and what this all means. A lot of them are really concerned, a lot of the research, they think hybrid means no power. We're also taking a, a chapter from our own book about naming, and we wanted to have a human name. So that's why we're leaning into Grand Touring. And we're you know, keeping in mind that we're in the premium segment. You know, these are folks that can afford the vehicle. They're looking for specific things. Elegance and power are two things that, that resonate with them. So we think we have the right approach. We will be communicating that it is electrified, and it does have the cues. You see the blue, um, but we're excited uh, about That's the vehicle. That's pretty, pretty subtle. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Lexus has helped you a lot in this regard because they have some pretty high-level, high-dollar electrified vehicles. Yeah. And I think you're, you know, they're coming from everywhere now. They're coming from BMW and Mercedes-Benz and Jaguar, Ferrari yeah. and never mind Tesla. 
Joy, what's been the reaction amongst the public as you go away from MKC and MKZ and MK whatever and now start using names like Aviator and Navigator? And Thank God. What, what's That's been good. the public's reaction? Well, God. I know you and the media love what you're doing, <laughs> but I'm just curious what your customers are telling you. So we think it's, it's being very well received. And, you know, we have examples. Uh, we all have stories. Dealers tell us stories of customers like a husband and wife arguing with each other over what car they actually have when they're trying to tell, tell the person driving the bus in the airport parking lot what kind of vehicle they have. So we knew it was time. And obviously our dealers gave us that feedback as well. Um, the, I think the Nautilus is a good example of where we've refreshed the vehicle. It's got the uniform lineup. It's not all new. Um, we, it doesn't have all the quiet flight DNA yet, but we've changed the name and it looks like a new vehicle and we're getting good reception. So we think it's a, a really positive move. Mm -hmm. Joy, what is the quiet flight DNA? So the quiet flight DNA is based on four tenants, four pillars beauty, human, gliding, and sanctuary. You talked about the beauty of the vehicle when you're talking about the modernity and how it looks. Uh, gliding is how the powertrain works and how it moves down the road, of course. Um, human is about the experiences and how you feel in it. And of course, sanctuary, it's all about that interior, just like my navigator. <laughs> it, it, it strikes me when we were looking at the presentation, but well, why don't I ask you this way? What's the difference between uh, reserve power and preserve? Was it reserve and preserve? Preserve. 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 And pure EV. Yeah. yeah. So they were two drive modes. So, you know, right now we have the drive modes on the vehicle depending on if, you know, you're in snow or if you mm. want to excite or, or how you want your driving to be or just in normal. There's two more drive modes that's being added to the electrified uh, vehicle. One is pure EV and the other one is preserve. So the pure EV means you're using the battery uh, full time, if you will. But you can designate. And, or you can go to preserve and, and preserve the battery and use the gas. So those are the two modes. <clears throat> is preserve also collecting electricity and storing it while you're driving? Because I know it's able to do that, but is that part of that or is it just? It does, it does allow some regeneration. It will, if your battery is completely down, it won't it won't bring it to a full right. charge, but it will regenerate and put the unused part of the, of the battery in there. Well. I, I should add, this is not new. Ford's been doing it on the energy yeah. vehicles. Most yeah. other automakers do that. Not all of them, but most do. But they don't call it preserve and you know, they don't have modes yeah. called to preserve. There's and a button on the dash where you, you can go pure EV, hybrid, or John, pure they're dash. confused it's, enough it's with just English. hybrid. It's the use <laughs> of words that are different than what yeah. we're used to. To try to okay. make it easier. To try to make it more human. Yeah. Yeah. Right. See, and this is pure marketing, too. Don't confuse <laughs> Pure marketing. <laughs> pure marketing. Well, so and I, it's giving customers what they that's want. That's why you're in charge. Right. I got a question about how do you handle all these different jobs? You're the head of Lincoln, you're the head of marketing, you're the, the chair of the board of the credit company. How do you divide up your day? Well, I have a great team in all, all respects uh, that does a lot of support and does a, a lot of jobs uh, for me as well and supports me. So as far as dividing up uh, my day, clearly I spent a lot of years at the credit company. So being the chairman, staying in tune what's going on there um, is easier for me. It's a little more autopilot. On the Ford and Lincoln side, you know, it depends on what the demands are, uh, but I just try to give equal attention to them and what it's needed. So. It's, it's a challenge. You just call, <laughs> as a, you, you call it as it happens. Exactly. And a big bottle of Advil. <laughs> <laughs> I, wa I want to know about sustainability. You've got, uh, you mentioned the, the rapid cadence of products that you've got going on here. It wasn't that long ago. Uh, and, and I'm a fan of your brand. But there wasn't a lot of years that have gone by where if you were El Chapo, the best place to hide would have been in the Lincoln display at, a, at an auto show someplace. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's not that way anymore. Now, you've got people who really want to come and see your product. But we've seen what's happened here. The jury has certainly embraced it uh, over a couple of years in saying these are some of the finest products out there. What do you do to keep it rolling? Well, one thing I think that's really uh, different about our opportunity with Lincoln this time is China. And one thing we've learned on the Ford side and the industry seeing over there uh, with the growth in the local brands there is you have to keep your product fresh. 
And their definition of freshness doesn't mean an all new. Uh, it doesn't even have to be a mid-cycle. It could be a small interim action. It could be a different powertrain. It could be a limited series. So there's the opportunity to serve our China customers in the way they want to be served and keep the brand fresh and the products uh, fresh as well. And so there's an opportunity for the U.S. and China to work together to create that. So that's got to be uh, advanced planning and figure out Absolutely. how you're going to be introducing these things to Absolutely. freshen the product. So from that regard, we're learning from the China team on that, mm -hmm. if you will. Do you spend a lot of time in China yourself? I do. I try to go over there um, once a, a quarter at a minimum. Um, the, the other team spends more time over there, but we're connected and we communicate a lot. Uh, it's a long trip, <laughs> but we, we're very connected. And you know, with technology today, you don't actually have to always be there physically. There's a huge movement in the auto industry now. Everybody wants to get in on these mobility services, ride hailing, ride sharing, dynamic uh, shuttle and the like. What role does Lincoln play in this world of mobility or does it? Well, if you think about the heritage with Lincoln and what the Lincoln brand stands for, we think that there could be an incredible future uh, for Lincoln as a luxury TAS, is what we call it, or, or transportation as a service opportunity. So that's something that we continue to, uh, to explore. Clearly on the Ford side, we have our Argo AI and our commitment to autonomous vehicles and all the investments that are going on in there. And we stay very closely connected with them and uh, imagining what the role Lincoln can play. Now, in the past, uh, you know, Lincoln had a livery role uh, with the town car, mm -hmm. and you could see in the future maybe there would be a new town car reimagined someday. Um, so we have a lot of uh, forward thinking that we've done around that, and nothing to announce on that, of course, but uh, something we continue to look into. So Lincoln as a TAS, as a, a transportation as a service, not just uh, something that you would retail or lease. Anything's possible, right? So it, it is. This is right. we continue if, to explore. If you were going to build an auto show halo car, or, or that would transform into a production vehicle, would it be a car? Or would it be an SUV? I them? think right now in the U.S. with the trends that we're seeing, you know, Aviator clearly has the opportunity to be our next halo vehicle. Navigator yeah. in the past has been our halo. Um, you know, we looked at Continental as the flagship sedan. So I think it might be different between what we, you see us do in China, where we have our presidential uh, edition of our Continental, which is a halo, and here where we have Navigator as a halo. So. I'm, I'm fascinated by what you just said, that Aviator could become the halo could for the brand. Halo. I always thought Navigator would be the, the, the biggest, most expensive, most luxurious. Well, you could see with the volume that's in this segment, it could surpass that and be, cre be created as a halo as well. I wouldn't be surprised to see that if you think about how Cadillac rolls. You know, think about CTS and, and then you say, look down at ATS. I thought it was better than the CTS myself. So I think that was more, it hung better. I'm not, I wouldn't be surprised to see it be Maybe aviator. we just want two halos. We'll have a navigator and <laughs> navigator aviator. Navigator and <laughs> aviator. You need another aider. <laughs> another aider. You need another aider in there. Well, we'll, well, we might work on that. Another aider. Your background, of course. Eliminator. So much in, in Ford credit. And Terminator. I got to be believe it when it comes to leasing and all the like that. Uh, Residual values have got to be high on your priority list of what you're going to do with Lincoln. What are you doing about that? So I talked about healthy sales earlier uh, in the United States, and we have uh, taken some actions uh, where we've been focusing more on pure retail sales and making sure we're not leasing too heavily in certain markets. And it's all about increasing those residual values to support the brand. Um, as you know, a big piece of brand value is resale value. And that's where we have to work on the residual values and continue to make great product, number one, but also distribute them in a healthy way. And so that's something we're working on. And when you say uh, distribute in a healthy way, you mean don't build too many of them at the plant, yes. essentially, Yes, and right? you've probably heard me to say one too few today a couple times, <laughs> which is not something you normally hear uh, from the manufacturer. But we think when it comes to luxury and when it comes to Lincoln and the boutique experience that we're kind of looking for, that one too few is kind of a nice mantra. And I have to tell you, I have two very respected dealers that have said that to me as well, that support the idea of one too few to really create, create the exclusivity, but also to create the demand. Mm -hmm. You don't want to see one in every driveway. That's how you create the demand, right? In a luxury community and a community of people that buy these vehicles, that buy Audis, that buy BMWs, 
You don't want to see one in every driveway. I would probably be okay seeing one in every other, other driveway. driveway. <laughs> but what I don't want to do is see them yeah. all over the dealership lots there with go. discounting going on. That's what I mean about healthy um, distribution. How do you, uh, uh, no. Forgive me. Uh, how do you create that sense of community with the brand that so many other brands have got that you need, that you certainly had, the company has enjoyed it for a long, long time. It seems like it drifted away. How do you recreate that, that community? That is a great question. And in China, communities around brands are very important. And one way we've been looking at this is around our Lincoln Way app and some of our access and what privileges we could provide in the app and experiences to create a community. So it needs to, I, you know, I don't see it for luxury just being a, a, a group of people that drive the same vehicle that want to hang out. I think of it as a group of people that are like-minded, that happen to drive a, uh, the same vehicle, that want to go to an experience, you know, whether it be to the theater or to... It's the Garden uh, and Gun Club for car people. Yeah, there you go, something like Very that. Very exclusive, <laughs> lots of events, people, like-minded people. Yes and a unique experience that you really can't do on your own and you know it's better to do in a group anyway mm -hmm. and that's something we're looking at in China and certainly we'll look at to have uh, unique experiences here as well. So what would be the privilege uh, if you will of being a be Lincoln treated, owner? Be recognized. Yeah. We're down to the last minute here, oh. so I'll need a, a quick answer on this. You, you look at some of the other luxury brands that are out there, especially from the Germans, and they've got 12 to 15 models in their lineup. I'm getting the feeling that you're not looking at having that big of a lineup. No, you know, we're represented right now in all of the segments. Uh, this is the second entrance in the mid size second, so we are not looking for those types of numbers, uh, and we think we're represented across the lineup. Well, good. Joy, I could talk to you all day long about Lincoln and where you're going to take it, but we're running out of time here. <laughs> Thanks so much for your time. Well, really good you. to have this time to learn more about you and the brand. Well, thank you for having me, and uh, it's time to go buy some Lincolns, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>